The Micronesian island group are located in the tropical West Pacific and consist of thousands of islands dotted between the Marshall Islands and the Philippine Sea. This section will cover the main regions surrounding the islands of Pompeii, Chuk and Yap, including the separate state of Palau. Since 1950, it is unknown how many, if any, storms made direct landfalls on the islands, though many storms have lingered over the area in their formative or developing stages, and the odd few passing through near their peak intensity. The costliest cyclone was Super Typhoon Mitag in 2002, causing damages of $150 million. The deadliest cyclone was Shatan just months later, causing 48 fatalities. The last storm to pass through the area was Typhoon Haiyan earlier this year. In late February 2002, a tropical depression formed in the western half of the Pacific Ocean to the west-southwest of Pompeii. After moving slowly westwards for around a day, the early season system developed into tropical storm Mitag and continued on a heading just north of west. Passing through or just south of many of the small Micronesian islands, Mitag curved slightly towards the south and attained typhoon intensity a fair distance southwest of Chuk. The storm then began towards the west-northwest and slowly began to intensify until it was a major Category 3 typhoon as it made its closest approach to Yap. Mitag continued towards the northwest and intensified further, eventually peaking as a ferocious Category 5 super typhoon with sustained winds of 160 mph and a central air pressure of 930 millibars, previously unheard of in the month of March. Mitag then curved towards the northeast and began to weaken. Failing to threaten any more land areas, Mitag turned towards the south and then southwest before dissipating completely. Most of the storm's effects occurred in Micronesia, first of all affecting Chuk State with tropical storm force winds and minor flooding. Mitag passed Yap as a fairly severe storm with wind gusts of Category 2 intensity on Wolei and Category 1 force winds on the island of Yap itself. Flooding and storm surge was the main cause of damage, with costs totaling $150 million. Two fatalities occurred, one on Palau. Later that very same year, at the end of June, another tropical depression formed in the region further south and west than Mitag did. After over two days stalling as a tropical depression away from significant land areas, the system developed into tropical storm Shatan, and edged closer to the island of Pompeii, turning towards the northwest as it made its closest approach. Chatan continued its slow movement and turned nearly due west, passing south of Chuk and then curved towards the north. Chatan then gained typhoon intensity and continued towards the northwest, becoming a Category 2 storm as it passed just north of Guam. Chatan continued to strengthen, becoming a major typhoon as it continued towards the northwest, holding or increasing in intensity for the next few days. Chatan peaked as a strong Category 4 super typhoon, with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a central pressure of 930 millibars as it passed Okinotoroshima. Chatan passed fairly close to the Daito Islands, still as a Category 4 storm, and then weakened as it curved towards the northeast, striking the southeastern tip of Honshu as a barely tropical storm, halfway through extratropical transition. In Micronesia, Shatan's slow movement wasn't too kind to the area, causing heavy and prolonged rainfall which resulted in flooding and mudslides, particularly in Chuk. Strong winds also occurred here and in Pompeii, where one fatality occurred and damages amounted to $3 million. Conditions were much worse on Chuk, where 47 died with damages of nearly $100 million. In Guam, the typhoon's eye wall crossed the northern part of the island, where gusts approached Category 3 intensity. 21 inches of rain fell here, and this combined with strong winds damaged 2,000 homes beyond repair. Damages here amounted to $60 million. The flooding trend continued in Japan, where six were killed, and damages reached a cost of half a billion dollars. In November 2003, a tropical depression formed over the Marshall Islands and moved generally southwest, becoming tropical storm Lupit to the northeast of Pompeii. The storm continued almost on a due west heading, becoming a typhoon as it passed Chuk. Lupit veered south slightly and continued to intensify, and then affected Yap State as a Category 3 typhoon. Lupit intensified further beyond this and peaked as an impressive Category 5 super typhoon with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a minimum pressure of 915 millibars. Lupit held on as a Category 5 storm for a day and a half before beginning to weaken, curving towards the northeast while still out to sea. Lupit then passed through the Japanese Itsu Islands before turning extra tropical the next day.
The storm caused tropical storm gusts in Pompeii and Chuk, accompanied by high waves and flooding rains. Some islands in Yap State received wind gusts of Category 3 intensity, and some damage occurred in this area. In total, there were no fatalities, but $1.7 million in damages. Near the beginning of April 2004, a tropical depression formed between Pompeii and Chuk and was slow moving at first, moving generally west-southwest for a time. The system developed into tropical storm Sudal eventually and turned towards the north, reverting back west a day later. Sudal reached typhoon intensity as it continued to meander westwards and went on to peak as a Category 4 storm as it passed through Yap State, weakening some as it made its closest approach to Yap Island itself, only to strengthen again once clearing the land areas. The storm peaked as a Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a pressure of 940 millibars. Sudal turned towards the north well away from the Philippines and then towards the northeast and soon after began to weaken from its peak. Sudal lost typhoon status near Iwo Jima and became extratropical by the end of the next day. Sudal caused minor damage in Chuk and Guam, with most of the storm's effects being remembered in Yap State. Here, substantial damages occurred, especially further south. As Sudal passed through, strong typhoon force winds and torrential rains damaged almost all of the houses on Yap Island itself, with nearly half completely destroyed. Despite this, there were no fatalities recorded, though the cost of the storm reached at least $14 million. An arc of islands known as the Mariana Islands separate the Philippine Sea from the rest of the Pacific Ocean. Most of the northern islands are uninhabited, with Guam being the southernmost. Storms commonly affect these areas, though direct hits from intense typhoons are not as common, though have happened before, as we're about to find out. Since 1950, around 31 storms have made landfall or passed very close to these islands, 15 tropical storms, 5 Category 1 typhoons, 5 Category 2 storms, 1 major Category 3 typhoon, 4 intense Category 4 storms, and a single catastrophic Category 5 super typhoon. The costliest cyclone was Typhoon Pongsona in 2002, causing damages of $700 million. The deadliest storm was Typhoon Karen in 1962, resulting in 11 casualties. The last storm to pass close was Typhoon Mirene in 2009, though Francisco passed not far from Guam this year. In November 1962, a tropical depression formed over Micronesia between Pompeii and Chuk and moved northwestwards as it intensified into tropical storm Karen. Karen continued towards the north, attaining typhoon intensity just hours later. The intensification continued and Karen rapidly strengthened to become an intense Category 5 super typhoon to the north of Micronesia. Karen turned towards the west after a day of slow movement in this area. The storm proceeded towards the Mariana Islands, still as a powerful Category 5 storm with 175 mph sustained winds. Karen passed directly over Guam, causing devastation here. Karen continued its intensity unwavering and eventually the storm peaked with a minimum central pressure of 894 millibars. Finally, on November 14th, Karen lost Category 5 status after holding it for the second longest period on record. At this point, the typhoon turned northwards, steadily weakening as it turned towards the northeast, passing very close to the Japanese Daito Islands. Karen then turned well out to sea, passing through the Itsu Island chain as a Category 1 storm. The storm finally turned extratropical far to the southeast of Japan. With sustained winds of near Category 5 intensity and probably much higher gusts, Guam suffered the worst of Karen. The island saw many of its buildings completely destroyed and vegetation in some areas was wiped out completely. With 95% of homes being damaged to a significant degree, the cost of the storm amounted to $250 million, with up to 37 fatalities reported. 
In mid-May 1976, a tropical depression formed near Chuk, Micronesia and drifted just south of west for over a day before becoming Tropical Storm Pamela. The storm curved towards the south, then to the east, becoming a typhoon as it stalled and changed direction once more, this time towards the northwest. Pamela continued to intensify and as it began to clear the Micronesian islands, the storm became a major typhoon and maintained Category 4 intensity for the best part of a week. Pamela peaked as a Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a central pressure of 920 millibars on approach to Guam, with the eye moving over the island near this intensity. The storm then continued in a general northwesterly direction, curving towards the northeast as it began to weaken and passing very close to Iwo Jima before weakening further and turning extra tropical. Heavy rain over Chuk caused mudslides which killed 10. Guam sustained the worst effects of the storm though with 4 out of 5 buildings damaged or completely destroyed with 3 fatalities, 300 injuries and damages amounting to half a billion dollars. In the first half of January 1988, a tropical depression formed near the Gilbert Islands of Kiribati and moved towards the northwest, becoming Tropical Storm Roy near the Marshall Islands. Roy then moved towards the west, gradually intensifying as it proceeded, becoming a typhoon and then a major typhoon a day afterwards. Roy quickly peaked as a Category 4 typhoon with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 940 millibars. The storm moved towards the west-northwest, passing through the Mariana Islands as a Category 3 typhoon, almost making landfall in Rota. Soon after clearing the islands, Roy began to weaken and dipped southwards, though still managed to strike the Philippines as a typhoon with a landfall in southern Luzon. Roy made it to the South China Sea, where it finally dissipated. The storm caused significant damage in Guam and Rota, with most areas on the latter sustained some degree of damage. Damages on the Mariana Islands and on the Marshall Islands amounted to a total of $28.5 million, with two fatalities, one on Ebeye Island and another on Rota. The Philippines also saw flooding, though no significant damage occurred here. In mid-November 1991, a tropical depression formed to the southwest of the Marshall Islands and was initially uncertain about its direction, turning back on itself at a low latitude and then back towards the northwest as it began to organise. The system developed into Tropical Storm Uri as it began to pull away and head towards Micronesia, arriving at Pompeii as a Category 1 typhoon. The storm passed north of the island and continued to strengthen, eventually reaching Category 4 status north of Chuk and became a Category 5 super typhoon on approach to the Mariana Islands. The storm peaked as a dangerous Category 5 typhoon with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 895 millibars after passing south of Guam. Yuri then turned towards the north and steadily weakened as it turned back towards the northeast, passing south of Agasawawa and moving out to sea, where eventually it turned extra tropical. In Pompeii, the storm caused small amounts of damage, resulting in losses of $3 million. In Guam, typhoon conditions occurred with winds gusting to Category 3 intensity. Heavy rain and high waves battered the island, and most of the island was left without power. In total, damages here amounted to $33 million, though no fatalities occurred. In August 1992, a tropical depression formed near the Marshall Islands and continued without intensifying for a number of days, passing Pompeii along the way. Eventually, the system developed into Tropical Storm Omar, shortly before passing north of Chuk. The storm continued towards the northwest, intensifying into a typhoon as it began to close in on the Mariana Islands. After levelling off in intensity, Omar waited until it was bearing down on Guam before continuing its intensification, managing to become a major typhoon by the time it passed over Guam itself. Omar continued to intensify after passing over the island and peaked as a Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a pressure of 920 millibars out to sea. Omar continued towards the northwest and after a few days began to weaken. The typhoon turned towards the west, weakening into a tropical storm half a day before landfall in Taiwan. Elmar continued towards another landfall in China before dissipating the next day.
In Guam, Omar destroyed thousands of homes with strong winds and flooding rains. The storm also caused heavy rain in Taiwan, where two fatalities occurred. In Guam, damages amounted to over $450 million, though no fatalities resulted here. Near the end of October 1997, a tropical depression formed near the Marshall Islands and dipped towards the south, stalling slightly as it developed into Tropical Storm Keith over open waters. Keith then proceeded towards the west-northwest, intensifying after a few days into a Category 1 typhoon. Keith passed safely north of Pompeii and the rest of Micronesia and continued to intensify rapidly at times, attaining Category 5 intensity after a couple of days. Keith peaked as a super typhoon with sustained winds of 180 miles per hour and a pressure of 910 millibars. Keith passed through the Mariana Islands near peak intensity, moving between Rota and Tinian in the northern Mariana Islands. Keith then began to weaken and lost Category 5 status less than a day later. The storm continued to gradually weaken, holding on to Category 4 intensity for two more days and passed near the Japanese Ogasawara Islands, still as a typhoon. Keith finally turned post tropical out to sea in early November. The storm caused strong winds on the islands it passed closest to, with sustained winds of Category 2 intensity at Saipan. Hundreds of residences were damaged by the strong winds, and thousands more suffered power outages. In all, the storm caused damages of $15 million and no reported fatalities. Later that very same month, at the end of November, a tropical depression formed in the Central Pacific region and after moving slowly northwards for a few days, began to turn westwards and was named Tropical Storm Packer as it became a tropical storm. Slow movement continued for a while before the storm began to accelerate somewhat, passing over the international dateline and into the Western Pacific region. The storm continued just south of west as a tropical storm for a number of days, passing through the southern Marshall Islands. At this point, Packer intensified into a typhoon and continued to strengthen over the next two days, peaking as a Category 4 storm. After weakening for a while, Packer regained its strength as it moved towards the west-northwest, far to the north of Micronesia. The storm continued and became a strong Category 5 super typhoon, a few hundred miles east of Guam. The storm would go on to pass very close to the northern point of that island as a strong Category 4 typhoon. The storm continued towards the west and began to intensify again, peaking as an intense Category 5 storm with sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and a central pressure of 920 millibars. Packer then moved towards the northwest, slowing down and quickly weakening once it lost Category 4 intensity, dissipating three days later out to sea. Typhoon Packer caused significant flooding on the Marshall Islands, with significant damages occurring on Island Lap Lap Atoll, with a Bay Island suffering power outages. Damages here amounted to $80 million. Guam fared much worse, particularly in north and west, where wind gusts approached 185 miles per hour. Many thousands of homes and buildings were damaged, with 1,500 completely destroyed. The northern Mariana Islands also sustained some degree of damage, though far lesser than what was seen on Guam. Total costs amounted to $580 million, yet no deaths were reported anywhere along Packer's path. Near the beginning of December 2002, a tropical depression formed a fair distance west of the Marshall Islands and moved towards the northwest, becoming Tropical Storm Pongsona as it turned towards the west. The storm continued in this fashion, passing north of Pompeii and developed into a typhoon as it approached Chuk, passing it too to the north. The storm turned towards the northwest and continued its gradual intensification, becoming a Category 4 storm before encountering the Mariana Islands, passing through at an angle before peaking with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a central pressure of 940 millibars. The storm weakened as it progressed polewards and turned extra tropical as it moved northeastwards through the open waters of the northwestern Pacific. Light damage was reported in Micronesia, where tropical storm force winds occurred in some areas. In Guam, Pongsona passed directly over the northern part of the island, where Category 4 typhoon conditions occurred, with wind gusts as high as 175 miles per hour. Major damage occurred in Guam, as well as the islands further north, Rota, Tinian and Saipan. In total, damages on the Mariana Islands amounted to $730 million, 700 million of which coming from Guam. One fatality occurred as a result of the storm.
Now to the near equatorial region of Malaysia, including Singapore and Borneo. This region rarely sees any tropical activity whatsoever, however, one or two storms have affected these regions in the past, quite seriously too. Since 1950, only two landfalls have been recorded in this region, one tropical storm and one Category 1 typhoon, so this won't take long. The costliest cyclone was Typhoon Vermeer in 2001, causing $3.6 million in damages, and the deadliest was Tropical Storm Greg in 1996, with 127 fatalities. Vermeer was the last storm to strike this region. In December 1996, a tropical depression formed in the South China Sea between Borneo and Vietnam, and on Christmas Eve developed into Tropical Storm Greg. The system continued towards the east, always fairly slow moving, but made landfall as a tropical storm on the northern tip of Borneo the next day. The storm quickly began to degenerate after landfall, and eventually dissipated between Mindanao and Indonesia. Greg caused significant flooding on Borneo, leaving 127 fatalities and a further 100 missing. Five years later, at a similar time of year, a tropical depression formed between Peninsular Malaysia and Borneo the day after Christmas 2001. Despite being less than two degrees north of the equator, Vermeer quickly developed into a typhoon shortly before landfall near the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. The storm continued over Sumatra, Indonesia, by now merely a tropical depression, but survived until emerging over the North Indian Ocean. Vermeer quickly began to intensify again and had a brief spell as a tropical storm once more before dissipating completely out to sea. The storm caused heavy rainfall on peninsular Malaysia, resulting in flooding and a landslide. In total, five people died and damages amounted to $3.6 million. Further up the Malay Peninsula we have Thailand, forming the barrier between the South China Sea and the Andaman Sea to the west. This area sees some tropical activity, but most of these disturbances are not very strong. Since 1950 there have been six tropical cyclone landfalls here, four tropical storms, one Category 1 typhoon, and a single Category 3 major typhoon as well. The costliest cyclone was Typhoon Gay in 1989, causing damages of $497 million. Harriet in 1962 is believed to be the deadliest storm, causing 935 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Tropical Depression Durian in 2006. In October 1962, a tropical disturbance formed near Palawan in the Philippines and moved gradually towards the west, crossing the South China Sea. The depression failed to intensify for the best part of a week, passing clear to the south of Vietnam and remaining northeast of Malaysia. On October 25th, the system developed into Tropical Storm Harriet and began to turn towards the northwest, making landfall in Thailand as a tropical storm before dissipating over the Andaman Sea. The storm caused significant damage in Thailand, resulting in a loss of at least 769 lives and damages of $34.5 million. On the first day of November 1989, a tropical cyclone formed over the Gulf of Thailand and began to move northwest, paralleling the coast of the Malay Peninsula. The depression strengthened into Tropical Storm Gay, becoming a typhoon the next day. Gay continued towards the northwest, intensifying as it did so, until the typhoon made landfall in Thailand as a severe Category 3 storm. Gay weakened over land, though still emerged into the Andaman Sea as a Category 1 cyclone, at which point it continued west-northwestwards. The storm then began a slow intensification that would take it into India as a Category 5 storm. In Thailand, Gay caused severe and widespread damage, mainly from up to 7 inches of rainfall which caused major flooding. From this, nearly 50,000 residences suffered damage or complete destruction, with a death toll rising beyond 800, thought to be as high as 967. Along with this, damages amounted to nearly $500 million here.
Forming the southernmost of the Philippine Islands, the Mindanao region lies between 5 and 10 degrees north and as a result does not receive as many storms as the rest of the country. However, storms that have struck have proven to be devastating at times. This region has received 16 cyclone landfalls since 1950, 7 tropical storms, 6 Category 1 typhoons, a single Category 4 storm and 2 catastrophic Category 5 landfalls. The costliest cyclone to strike this region was Typhoon Bopa in 2012, causing $1.04 billion in damages. The deadliest cyclone came the year before in the form of Tropical Storm Washi, which killed 1,216. The last storm to make landfall was Bopa last year. In mid-October 1970, a tropical storm formed over open waters to the south of Yap State, Micronesia, and continued towards the west-southwest, already at a fairly low latitude. Despite this, the storm began to intensify and continued to do so until it was a strong Category 4 typhoon, with winds of 150 miles per hour sustained and a central pressure of 940 millibars. The storm began to curve towards the northwest and made landfall in southern Mindanao near this intensity, making a second landfall on the western part of the island as a mineral typhoon. Emerging over waters once more as a tropical storm, Kate skirted the western Visayas region and struck northern Palawan as a Category 1 typhoon, intensifying once more as it paralleled the coast of the Philippines out in the South China Sea. Kate reached a secondary peak as a Category 3 typhoon, turning towards the west and fizzling out as it reached Vietnam. In southern Mindanao, the typhoon roared ashore with winds of up to 130 miles per hour, destroying or damaging thousands of residences. The storm is thought to have caused over 600 fatalities here. In Vietnam, significant flooding occurred, though damage and death toll figures are unknown in this location. Near the end of August 1984, a tropical depression formed over Micronesia and began to move northwards, becoming Tropical Storm Ike the next day. Ike passed to the southwest of Guam before the storm itself turned southwestwards and became a typhoon, weakening once more near Yap. Once again gaining typhoon intensity, Ike progressed just south of west and gradually intensified, peaking as a Category 4 typhoon with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour and a pressure of 950 millibars. The typhoon then passed through the northern tip of Mindanao where most of the damages occurred. Ike continued through the Philippines, making landfall on Cebu as a Category 2 storm, Negros as a Category 1 typhoon, and Panay at the same intensity before moving out into the South China Sea as a tropical storm. Ike re-intensified, however, and again reached Category 4 intensity as it approached Hainan, making landfall there as a significantly weaker Category 1 typhoon, an intensity it held until its second landfall in China, there was only a tropical storm on its third and final landfall on the mainland. The worst of the storm occurred in northernmost Mindanao, where hundreds were killed. Heavy damage also occurred on Kebu, where 100,000 were left homeless. In all, a quarter of a million homes were damaged or destroyed, and nearly 1,500 perished during the storm in the Philippines. In China, further damages occurred, with thousands of structures sustaining significant damage. The total cost of Ike amounted to a billion dollars. In mid-December 2011, a tropical depression formed on the southern periphery of the Micronesian Islands and moved towards the west, remaining weak for over two days. Finally, whilst passing close to Palau, the system became Tropical Storm Washi and continued towards the Philippines. The storm made landfall near the centre of the eastern coast of Mindanao and crossed through the island. Washi made landfall again on Palawan before slowing down and dissipating over the South China Sea. Although weak, Washi caused severe flooding across Mindanao, resulting in over 10 feet of flood water and numerous landslides. The storm caused 1,268 fatalities in all and damages of $48 million. In late November 2012, a tropical depression formed to the southwest of Pompeii, and the slow-moving system quickly became Tropical Storm Bopa. Continuing to be of no hurry, the storm drifted west-northwest for a day, before beginning to move more decidedly towards the west, then west-southwest, becoming a typhoon just after reaching its lowest latitude. 
The storm continued towards the west-northwest, intensifying quickly to become a Category 4 storm, an intensity which it held as it passed close to Palau before waning some. However, on approach to the Philippines, Belper intensified again, peaking as a powerful Category 5 typhoon with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central pressure of 930 millibars, making landfall in Mindanao near this intensity. The storm weakened over Mindanao, skimming the sudden tip of the island of Negros and passed through Palawan, still as a typhoon. Weakening briefly to a tropical storm in the South China Sea, Belper turned north and then put on another display of rapid intensification and peaked again as a major typhoon before weakening and quickly dissipating in the end near Luzon. The storm caused widespread devastation, mainly due to flooding and landslides. In total, the storm caused at least 1,100 fatalities, possibly as high as 2,000, and damages of at least $1 billion.